Whether you knew it was going to be cold when you signed up for the triathlon or a cold front just rolled in, it doesn't have to ruin your race day. But if you're freezing cold before the race and you're shivering for the first 30 minutes or so on the bike, you are wasting precious calories and energy that you're going to need for that run. Not to mention it just feels miserable. Here's how to avoid that. Hey, it's Coach Eric, and this channel is all about mistakes I have made in triathlon, put into a free weekly video so that you can become a better triathlete. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss another one. But if you're sick of making all the mistakes yourself and you're interested in more of an individualized training plan that changes daily based on your individual lifestyle and needs, email me at ewjtry at gmail.com. We'll set up a free consultation to talk about coaching and see what's best and if it will work for you. Now, your definition of cold may be different than mine. It's all relative. Either way, you don't want to be cold before the race starts. Ironman Arizona's coming up. It's supposed to be in the mid-40s when people are getting into the water when that race starts. That is cold. You want to stay warm before the race. Dress in layers. If you're cold and shivering at all, your body is wasting energy, burning calories that you're going to need. So if it's potentially rain, potentially wind, with those layers, you want to have an outer base layer that's at least water resistant uh, so you're not wet and get cold that way. It's definitely better to be too warm than too cold. So I'm talking winter hat, gloves, hand warmers if you need them. Just you want to actually have a little bit of a sweat going before the race. Depending on your typical pre-race plan, you can actually drink a warm or hot beverage to help stay warm overall as well. So I know some people drink coffee beforehand, but if you don't want to drink too much, uh, maybe have decaf. Uh, while you're in transition. So it's still that warm beverage or tea or something like that. Stay warm as long as possible. Strip down as late as possible. And even once you're in your wetsuit, if you can still have on gloves or a hat or socks, anything that keeps you warmer before that race starts. Depending on your race distance and your pre-race plan, you can even do a little jog, a warm up, get the blood flowing, get the body temperature up a bit. Uh, but again, talk to your coach. Uh, don't do anything brand new, but stay warm. So I was talking about the air temperature being cold, but chances are if the air temperature is cold, the water might be freezing. So I have another video I'll put in the upper uh, corner here uh, that talks about all the things that you can do to stay warmer or better, better, well, better said to say, avoid the shock of the swim. So uh, watch the video, but a quick uh, you know, recap are things like earplugs, more than one cap, a thermal cap, Vaseline, booties uh, to keep your feet warm. So check out that video. All right, once you get out of the water, have an extra towel, even a small one like this to dry off. Quickly wipe down your arms, your leg, get your feet dry, uh, especially your feet as you uh, either put on socks for warmth or stick your feet into the shoes. Either way, you want them to be dry. Now, one thing you can do that won't keep you warm per se, but it'll help keep your feet dry is to actually put in some like baby powder or talcum powder uh, inside the shoe. Uh, so when your foot gets in there, it will absorb some of that moisture. The socks are great on the bike to help you stay a little bit warmer as far as your extremities go. If you've got race shoes like mine especially, there's a bunch of air vents. There's really no coverage from the, uh, the wind on top of the shoe. Great for hot weather, not for cold. The problem with this is I get these shoes a half size small so that I don't have to wear socks. They still feel good without, without socks on. So I can't use this for cold weather unless I do something like this where I put a nice toe cover over the top um, and it keeps uh, my toes a little bit warmer and I can still go without the socks. Now, aside from your feet, most people, once they get on the bike, their legs are pretty warm. It's the upper body, especially if you're dripping wet from the swim, that gets really cold. So one of the things you can do for that first part of the bike is arm warmers. Roll them down ahead of time and that way when you're in transition, you just pop it on like that. And if you want, you can take the time to roll it up. But if you're more concerned about time but still want to stay warm, then once you get on the bike, um, you can hold steady and just pull it up. And now you've got a whole arm coverage and uh, protection from that wind. Now it's not the fastest thing to do, but you could put on a vest in transition that keeps your, your core warm, where it's really gonna block the wind uh, to keep you a little bit warmer, but it's still ventilated in the back. So it's not gonna really overheat you. And especially if you're thinking about wearing stuff like this, it's gonna be pretty cold out there. Um, it's not the most aero, but it is pretty tight against me. And you just have to decide how warm do you want to be versus are you shivering uh, for the first part of the bike course? And if you do get warm after a half hour, you can simply zip it off, put it in your back pocket, or if it's a cheap uh, vest you don't mind parting with, you can toss it at an aid station. Now, if it's still cold, when you get to the run course, you can have a long sleeve dry fit shirt, maybe some thin gloves. 
in your transition area to wear out on the run course. Now, a lot of races that are freezing in the morning, especially if you're doing a, an iron distance race, you're out there all day long. And so it actually will heat up. Uh, and so you may not need any of these things when it comes to the run. The exception to that is if you're out there, uh, like most people past uh, sunset, even if it's warm, you were sweating, it was hot, and now all of a sudden that sun goes down and it gets cold pretty quickly typically. So having, instead of in transition two, have that long sleeve dry fit or gloves um, or even hand warmers in your special needs bag just in case you need it. Um, and that way you're not shivering cold, especially if you're walk running in the later stages, you're gonna cool down a lot quicker uh, than if you're running in the heat. When it comes to really cold weather, triathlons are tough enough. There's no point in being miserable. Okay, let's sum up. The most important thing, stay warm before the race, dress in layers, get a little sweat going. Don't strip down until you absolutely need to. Then on the bike, keep your toes and your upper body warm are the most important things. And then out on the run, you may not need it, but if it stays cold, put something in your special needs bag or even just in transition two. You never know if you get there, you don't have to take it. But that's how you stay warm in the cold weather. I hope that was helpful for you. Put a comment below, tell me what's the most helpful thing in cold weather. I hope you stay warm, get to that finish line, and until next week, I'll see you on the trails.